Somebody. Yeah. Man, you know I'm excited about this interview. Oh, yes. And, and you know, I'm excited about this interview because. This is family. Know, yeah, this is family. You yes. Know, from his wife. Oh, to, yes. We to love our to, sister. And, 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 and Will Downing, his yeah, brother. I know. And see, here's the thing about it. I, I love I love solid brothers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you know brothers that when we walk into the room, they're like the brothers is here. Right. You feel what I'm saying? I'm excited. The gangsters about this. are coming. You, you, you know, in Jesus' name. Yes. You know, the 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 the, the hit no, maker. No, no. Gospel gangsters. <laughs> <laughs> Brother <laughs> Odin, who do we have with us today, man? Man, we are excited to have this gentleman. Um, we've had his wife, who we love so dearly. Um, who we were introduced to through our our brother Will Downey. Yeah. Um, the legendary R&B and jazz artist. And this young man is an artist in his own rights, having played with Chaka Khan and Chaka, Chaka. everybody in the <laughs> industry. <laughs> this man has an impeccable reputation, and we're so honored to introduce and present to our listeners all across the world the one and only Jay Williams. Welcome, bro, to the Wake Up Morning Show Thank with you. Dr. LT Thank and Robert you. L. Dean. Thank you. I appreciate the invite. I appreciate the invite. Man, we had to have you. We had to have you. Because you're an artist, too. You're somebody, too. Well, you, you know, you know. I'm going to start off with my beef early. You always week. got a beef. I know, I man. Thought I, gotta, you know, I, I thought you got saved today. I thought he got saved today, Jay. Uh, uh, Jay, Jay <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you this. And, and, and a lot of times, uh, black men don't know how to say this to each other. But, man, I love you. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, you why. Be, because... Um, I, I watched you. I watched you being a timekeeper for so many different people, um, and I, I love this your spirit. Yes, and it comes through because uh, even your wife, you know, oh, it's yes. like she like became our our, our sister. Our sister, yes. And so I feel like today I'm looking at my big brother, my little brother, big brother, uh, because you just have just the impeccable integrity that we love to see in the industry. So uh, that's my beef. Okay. That's, that's my beef. This you morning. got it out. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Thank you, yeah. Lord, for renewing. Well, first of all, first of all, I want to thank you all for the love you've shown my wife, um, in in her endeavors and and her first single that she put out. I mean, you all really embraced her and loved on her and uh, and supported her, and I appreciate that. Well, she can sing, brother. It ain't yeah. hard to. She can sing. Yeah. Yes, yes sir. Can. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> and and the fun thing about you know. Uh, you all as a couple is is that um, we we were fortunate to be able to build relationship. Mm -hmm. um, so when we see things and we we hear things and uh, it's always like okay, family's on and how do we work in family? And I think that when you respect people's craft, um, it's very easy to support them because their craft is so solid. And um, and then you look at their uh, their entrepreneurial endeavors. I'm like saying, boy, this is this is. Uh, all right, so let me just get down to it. How did you start in the industry? In the industry, wow. Yeah. Um, well, of course, I've always been I've been playing since I was three. Wow. Um, but I didn't start in the industry, uh, I guess, until um, I would say about twenty two, twenty three, when I started traveling mm -hmm. on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, growing up, I, I, in my teenage years, I, you know, played, of course, played in church, mm -hmm. but I started playing in, you know, jazz and clubs and everything locally. Mm -hmm. Um, then right around the age 22, 23, I went on a tour with a, uh, artist from London. His name is Ali. Mm -hmm. Um, he was on Island, uh, records, mm -hmm. Island records, and he did like a promotional tour here in the U S um so that was my first real tour um i did some work with ben tankard wow i uh, did a couple of, yeah i did I, I think i was at that time when i was working with ben i did bet you remember bet jazz yes yeah. yes he did uh he did like a taping for bet jazz and i played for him on that then i did some traveling with him as well but um when i got really really got into the industry um, was when I started playing with Will down there. Wow. Um, I, up until that point, I was, you know, still doing some things, some, some of the smooth jazz gigs and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, then, uh, oh, well, I, I missed something. I toured with, uh, R&B group Jagged Edge. 
Oh, yeah. yes, sir. Yeah, for about a year. Mm -hmm. I went out with them. I think that was 2000. That was 2000, actually. Because mm -hmm. I got married the next year. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was 2000. So um, I went out with that. And then, you know, got back into the, the jazz room. Mm -hmm. Then I was introduced to Will. Um, he needed he needed another drummer and the base of his his band was pretty much from the dc area mm -hmm. and the guitar player you know recommended me he's like there's this young kid young guy i, I mean i was 26 27 what is this you know I, I'm, I'm the youngest of, of all of them, all of them so. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so uh this guy you know plays drums he's real good you know he learns music quick um so he sent me the music he did like a two-day rehearsal. Will wasn't at these, these rehearsals, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we, did, we did rehearsals. Then I drove down to Charlotte, North Carolina. This was in 2004. Uh, I think it was Valentine's weekend, as a matter of fact. Drove down to Charlotte. And I drove <laughs> because I needed to drive right back home to be at church that next that Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. So it was on a Saturday. We drove down. My wife and my my daughter at the time she was she she wasn't even one yet actually wow um we drove down to charlotte we you know i did the, i did the show played everything verbatim you know um drove back home to church that sunday morning wow then after church that sunday morning i flew to kansas city to meet jerk to meet will again you know because we had another show um so after the show in kansas city he said hey man it's you know, you want the gig, it's yours. And that's how, you know, wow. you know working with Will. What, what, he, he came out the gate yeah. with, one of the, with one of the greatest. Now, who was your influence as a kid? Because most musicians come from a musical family in most cases. Mm -hmm. But, but, but before, you, before you say that, uh, just, just dispel this rumor for me. Rumor had it that you had, when you auditioned, you had a full set of hair. But but when you but when you became a part of the the Will Downing experience that because you was in the center that she, he said no you have to shave your head like so so that you could look chaka chaka and Amadi up there too, so well that, that room I don't think it's quite true I mean I, I mean because I didn't cut my hair I may have had a wreath right <laughs> right right but that's about it right yeah well I I, I started balding early so. I, yeah, I know that that rumor was <laughs> right. Right, that, that that wasn't a good. That was a lie. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it, it, it was. It sounded good, but right, right. But, but the truth right, will right. set you free. Right, it, every time. Hey, I just I just pictured it for a minute. I had ways and everything. <laughs> right, right. He had a curl. He had a Jericho right. with a with a shag. It, well, he was shaking right. the juice with fly. Yeah. He's shaking. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. But um, back to well, my my first major influence was my dad. Um, he was an organist and singer and preacher in, in the D.C. area. Well known, and he would always take me around with him mm -hmm. uh, when he had to play for different choirs and groups when I was a kid. Wow. And, um, you know, if they didn't have a drummer, he'll, you know, he'll say, well, my son plays drums. Right. You know, and that's that's how that started. Of course, he didn't have to pay me at that time. So. Right. <laughs> I was, you know, that was my influence, my, my first influence then. I had a cousin who uh, passed away. He, he was an amazing drummer. He influenced me in many ways as far as, uh, you know, introducing different types of music to me, different bands, uh, you know, specifically in jazz mm -hmm. and different drummers, you know, he introduced me to as far as checking out. Then later on, I be, I end up be becoming friends with those drummers. Wow. So, yeah, that, that was a big influence. And it, and there's a lot of other DC musicians. I always give, you know, thanks to them first. Right. You know, then um then on the other other side of things, uh different drummers, uh a guy named Dennis Chambers. Heard him. Um he used to he used to play with P Funk and yep. different, you know, fusion bands, George Duke. Mm -hmm. Uh a guy named Will Kennedy. He plays with a group called the Yellow Jackets. Mm -hmm. Oh, Yellow Jackets. So, uh yeah, and Another gentleman um, by the name of Ricky Lawson, he passed away. Mm -hmm. He yeah. played on pretty much all most of those R and B records yep. you heard in the nineties. That was him on drums. The Whitney Houston record. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson. Um, Michael Jackson. Yeah. 
uh, you know, just Lionel Richie and all of those records. And, wow. You know, so so can he's, I, he's a big influence. Can I share this story with you? Ricky was living um, very, very close to San Diego, and Ricky would come down almost every other week to a jam session that we, we would have. And, mm-hmm. and Ricky would always say, um, he was always in a teaching mode. You know, when he would come into the different hangs that we would have, Ricky was just like family. And, and the funny thing about it is, my dad doesn't really go out a lot, you know, mm-hmm. um, but for some reason, uh, Ricky was playing jazz at the creek and him and my dad started a conversation and then they just became buddies. You know what I'm saying? That was the way Ricky was. And, you know, I remember the day they said that Ricky had, you know, uh, had had his stroke and, and, and ultimately passed away. It affected the jazz community, especially um, in the city of San Diego, because he was spending so much time with so many of the young musicians here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricky was amazing. I mean, it's, it's, he's never he never met anybody, you know, once. <laughs> it, it, yeah. he's, he, you know, his, his, his big thing, love you, love you, love you. Yeah. You know, he always would say that. And one advice he gave to me uh, in the music business, because um, he was on something, and I, I was surprised that he was playing. You know, mm-hmm. he's like, man, I turned down nothing but my collar. Yeah. You know, and, and I've been using that every now and, you know, mm-hmm. right. then since, since, you know, being around him and, and talking to him. And then I also do a smooth a cruise, a smooth jazz cruise. Mm-hmm every year and Ricky was one of the drummers on the crew so I spent a lot of time mm-hmm. with Ricky sitting down and talking and you know talking about the history of his playing and everything because the, that group I mentioned Yellow Jackets yes. he was actually the original drummer of that group mm-hmm. wow and, um, yeah. yeah so I matter of fact last night I was in the car listening to Ricky play on that one of those mm-hmm. old records you know so yeah. his, his playing his playing is like you know the sticks with me like yeah. you know I, I record a lot on the, you know a lot of the smooth jazz records mm-hmm. and i channel ricky i channel his playing wow as a matter of fact i even have a picture in my studio of ricky <clears throat> excuse me of ricky myself and another drummer who passed away tahari mm-hmm. parker mm-hmm. um just as an inspiration because wow. both of those guys you know both of those guys played on a lot of those records that i you know and artists that i'm recording for now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you know, yeah. so Ricky, Ricky meant a lot. What what I'm getting from you is that you are a student of the game. You know, a lot of times people come in as if they're the first to do anything, these younger musicians. But I'm noticing that mm-hmm. you are a student. Let's talk about being a student of what you're in, whether you're an athlete, whether you're a, a entertainer, uh, actor, actresses. It's important to know the history and to study and to, to be on the shoulders of those people. Uh, I am a sponge when it comes to that type of thing. Um, my my, I've been blessed to ha- what they say have big ears. Mm-hmm. So I'm always hearing music, not just listening. I'm always hearing and really, you know, ab- absorbing what's coming, you know, through through the air, you know, through music, you know. So which which has helped me over the years of learning music, mm-hmm. you know. I, I learn music pretty quick. Um, you know, as I get older now, I must say, I have to write some things down. <laughs> you know, cause, and a lot of times some things start to sound the same. Right. You know, from artist to artist. So, you know, you have to, I make my own little, you know, charts and cheat sheets or whatever. But um, I've become a, a student of that way. Now that we have YouTube, I'm on YouTube. I go to YouTube University. Wow. <laughs> pretty pretty much every every night, you know, just to learn something. Either something watching new. Mm-hmm. a drummer or something technical or, you know, how to how to do something real simple. How to you know, I I had a bee nest, you know, in my in my yard. I mm-hmm. went on YouTube and I get rid of it. Right. You know, right. So just that type of thing, you know. So I'm a sponge in, 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 in those ways. So yeah, so definitely. So let me ask you this question. This is a rumor, and I want you to help me dispel the rumor. Um, rumor has it that yeah, you know, right. I'm just you know I'm just trying to get delivered. You know I'm just them. you know I'm just trying to make sure that we make it. Rumor has it that um, the the way that you and uh, your wife met is that she was singing, and you was you happened to be playing the drums, and you added an extra uh to it, 
And at the end of her singing, at the end of the night, she came up to you and said, brother, um, I like that extra uh you gave, and that's how you got together. T I I any room, well, is that true or not? Just tell me how, how it all happened. You close. Okay. You really close. Uh-oh. You very close. He got a little Actually, something. <laughs> I was 12 years old, uh -huh. and her mom, her mom was a great singer. Mm -hmm. uh, her mom had to sing, and my dad played for her, and I was playing drums. Mm -hmm. And my wife was at the service at that time. So later on, after the service, that's when we met. Mm -hmm. And um, so I always tease her and said that she spotted me across the crowded church. <laughs> right, right, right. Hell of love. <laughs> right. It was she destined. Me. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, 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 um, you guys are you are both in the industry and you both have your own um uh careers. How does that balance out with, you know, she touring, you're touring, you guys have different uh, entrepreneurial things going on. How do you all balance off uh uh life together? Oh, wow. Um well, being married for 21 years helps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it was of course we had to get used to to the scheduling, you know, and raising, you know, kids as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, a lot of, you know, throughout the years I was gone most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and she was, you know, home with the kids and everything. But, um, when I come home, I'm home. Mm -hmm. I don't do a lot of hanging out, you know? Right. Uh, so I try to, I try to be home and, and do the normal home things. I, you know, I like to cook. I wash dishes. Right. I, I don't cut grass. I hire somebody to do that. There you yeah. go. Yes, all right. <laughs> Cause you got well, allergies, right? Allergies. It, that's what it is. See, See? I got allergies. So, <laughs> you know, so I try to try to I try to be here when I'm when I'm here, and even when I'm not here, I try to, you know, communicate right. as much as possible, mm -hmm. and make sure everything is good, you know. And now, sometimes they, uh, she and my, you know, my kids. They actually travel with me sometimes when mm -hmm. it's possible. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like I mentioned doing cruises, I've taken them on, you know, cruises with me. Mm -hmm. um, just a few weeks ago, I was in Vegas with Shaka uh -huh. and I flew my wife out to, to hang with me, you know. Mm -hmm. So. So, so, so that, was, that was cool. She could have so, sung background it, for her. Yeah. Your wife is bad enough to sing background for Chaka. She really is. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, so. But she, she wouldn't say that because those parts are real high. Yeah. So she, <laughs> but, you know, that's a whole different thing. Right. See, 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 see now, yeah. see now you're working it all out because see, next year's, you know, we have a, a, a small hang for about, a, about 500 people. It's called Jazz at the Creek. Uh huh. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Patrice Russian just did it. We've had everybody Ronnie from Laws. Ronnie Laws to, you know, Kenny, um, Lattimore. Kenny Lattimore, Shante. Everybody come and do this little cool hang in San Diego mm -hmm. because it's, it's fundraiser for nonprofits for kids, right? And, okay. um, you know, the committee has already met. We just finished, right? And the committee has already met. And, and the first person that came um, up for next year was Will Downing. Yes, sir. And Shaka Khan. Now, oh, wow. I think we can make this deal right now. See, this is what we can do because we can have Will on Sunday, Shaka on Saturday. Right. And then what we can do is we could have, you could fly Jay Sean in and, and, you, and you could then, we could have her on Sunday morning, you know, uh -huh. to, to, to do all the things at the church and it could be a family affair. Well, let's go on this ink. This. Robert, that's a good ink deal. That's, that's, a, that's a good ink deal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but Brother Jay, I think you can make it happen. We'll talk offline. <laughs> right, okay. right. <laughs> All right. Right. Yeah, come to come, come to God's country, San Diego. Now, <laughs> now you had something to do with your wife's single, right? You're working on her music as well. Yes. Um. It's actually mainly a guy by the name of Chris Big Dog Davis out of <laughs> Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Great producer. Um. He he redid you know the music, did the track. Um. What I did was I just engineered my wife's uh, vocals. We did her vocals here at the house. Mm -hmm. And um, wow. Uh, so I, I did that and, you know, that was an experience. Tell, talk well, to talk me because, about that. Because my, uh, my wife's yeah. an artist and I do engineering too. <laughs> talk about and, that. And, 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 it, and it makes, it makes life sometimes special. So talk right. about that. Man, let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you, you know, we've had a bunch of scheduled sessions mm -hmm. that uh -huh. we started on yeah. and, you know, then we'll get into Cause she, you know, she asked me for my opinion. Right. So if I give my opinion, if it's not, you know, the opinion she wants. Go, right. 
Yeah, right. it'll you know it'll be a whole different thing, you know. So, it, you know, we had our moments, but we we made it work. Yes, we made it work. You know, we finally got what we were both comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, ultimately, ultimately, she had to be comfortable with right. the most. Yeah. Right, right. But, you know, we got what you know. We got some good taste and right. made it happen. Right. Well, you know, I want to give you kudos because I, I got totally kicked out my studio. And it was mm. and was told that I was squashing the spirit, and and I kept saying to him, "Good data in is good data out." And, and finally, finally, the other producer said, uh, uh, "Mr. Thompson, we know that this this is uh, your spot, but um, we're gonna ask you to leave because they it, it, it ain't working the way." And so I went back into my office and handled the business of the record Amen, and should've. let them uh-huh. handle the creativity of right. it. And, and so now, because I used to manage my wife too, right? And I had okay. to, and and I had to fire myself, because mm. uh, I, I realized that uh, uh, the husband was coming out more than the manager. So I was like, okay, you fired. You got You got to go sit. And then I got a good manager. I, I, can, I can understand that. Yeah, you know, I can understand. And, and you're smart for making that decision, because I, I'm a thing. I, I believe this. You can't let business come in between marriage. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to separate the two. And at times it's hard to do so. Mm-hmm. So there's, you know, there's been times where we bump heads over the whole business situation. Right, right. And, you know, it got to the point where she went to one room, I went to room, one room, and we didn't talk for a minute. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And in that case, we can't let business make that happen. That's right. Yeah, let and, that happen. And, and then the key thing about it is women are very – cunning in the spirit realm because every time we went to our separate rooms she went to the prayer room you know in mm-hmm. our house and i'm like is she telling jesus on me and every time yeah. she come out she'd be all happy i'm like oh she done told the lord on me right. so i already knew yeah. i had lost the fight the you know everything else and i'm like the saying, okay, ain't yours, yeah, the what, what we gonna do now <laughs> uh-huh. yeah now now what are some yeah. of the places that outside of the united states that you've traveled with the various artists. Oh wow! Um, Dubai. Oh, that's okay. Okay, understand. wait a minute. Wait a minute. You gotta stop right. Go. You gotta stop go. right there. Everybody talk about Dubai. You know now, and you just said it all casual and everything. Can you just give us a little experience of the Dubai? Dubai? What, what is so amazing about Dubai? Wow, Dubai. I mean, of course, the the, the buildings were amazing. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, the the atmosphere. You know it. You know, it's desert land, but when you go into the city, it's 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 amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the one of those hotels that we we actually did a, we didn't stay in this hotel, but we did a tour of the hotel. I mean, it's a suite that's full of gold. Everything was gold. Wow. Including the toilet. Yeah. Mm. Jeez. Yeah, it was it was crazy. And then um, for the first time, I we went what they call sand duny. Mm-hmm. Um. They took us in this vehicle uh, on the desert, and, and you know, and we basically was going up and down these these hills and 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 steeps. And the guy was driving pretty fast, you know. To get what they have to do is they have to deflate the the, the air and the tires mm-hmm. in order to get you know get traction on on the sand. That wow. was cool. Mm-hmm. That was yeah, cool. That was, that was yeah. That was I, cool. Experience. I would have been I, praying I was, and speaking in tongue and everything. <laughs> I'm a thrill seeker, so I like stuff like. Oh no! See, see, see. <laughs> I, 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 I'd have been the blood of Jesus. Oh, yeah, this yeah. ain't of God. Uh, right. Show the thing. Hell. Right, right. For Let real. me out. <laughs> yeah, right. right? Yeah. And where else have you gone? Where are some of the other places? Uh, Russia. Now, mm. I, I must say, I didn't enjoy Russia. Um, for one, well, a couple of reasons. A couple of reasons. The hotel we stayed in. I mean, it was a smoke-free hotel, so. There was smoke everywhere. Even in my room, I could smell it. You know, wow. um, the hospitality was really cold. Mm. You know, to the point um, when I was when we were leaving, I was at the airport giving my passport, and the the lady behind behind the window was like mean mugging me. I'm like, I'm leaving. Right. You can smile. Right. You know. You know. So. Um, and I'm not really a tourist either. So, one one time we went, you know, ride around, look at buildings like the Kremlin and all that stuff. Everybody got out of the van, took pictures and everything. I got out, looked around. I got back in the van and went to sleep. 
<laughs> you know. Right. So, um, so Russia, that that was, you know, and it was cold too. Mm -hmm. So that that experience was a little weird. Um, I've been to Japan. Ooh, I've been to Japan about. I want to say six times. I guess. Wow. With, yeah, with different artists. I, uh, with so, there was a guy named Dave Cos and, and oh, yeah. Butler. Dave Cos, yes. Yeah. yeah, I went there with them. Um, I've been there with Dave a couple few times. I went there with Gerald Albright. Wow. Um, yeah, so uh, Japan is, is is one of my my places that oh, I like. You know, and, okay. And 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 actually, people actually know me now. Uh -huh. You know, when I go over there, so that's kind of cool. You know? It, it, you know, I gotta ask this question because when you go to mm -hmm. Japan, they have different types of hotels and restrooms and everything else that nature. Um, did you have the restroom with a toilet and a bidet, or did you have the did you have the restroom with the hole in the floor? Uh, the I had the restroom with the bidet. Okay, because see now in the airport in the airport and stuff they have the hole on the floor situation. Yeah, that that yeah. That, that is this. I'm like Father Jesus. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, that's not what I'm used to. Yeah. No, yeah. sir. I'm like, excuse me, somebody stole the toilet. Was it gold? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Y'all need to have cameras around here or something. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, but, I, uh, yeah. I don't know if I, if I squat that somebody come and pull me in. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, now, did you ever play with, with my favorite singer of all times, Natalie Cole, ever? I didn't. I didn't. I did see her alive one time. She came on. She was a special guest on one of the cruises that I do. Mm -hmm. um, I did see her live, and I, I have some friends who played for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm gonna ask you this: um, with all the things that you're doing, and um, and playing the drums. Now, a lot of times, like because I'm a preacher, I'm in the pulpit, and I see things differently. Uh, Cause I'm seeing the audience and seeing everything that's happening. You are the drummer, and most of the time you dead center. What are some of the weirdest things you've seen while you've been sitting on the drums that almost caused you to lose time? Oh, there's <laughs> several things. Um, I've seen wigs fly. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen wigs fly. I've seen you know people act kind of like they're going to do something and security had to come and kind of stand around them. That wow. type of thing. Um, the hardest thing is, you know, when certain singers are singing and they don't sound good right? and I can't hold my laugh sometimes. <laughs> and then <it> can't. <laughs> In my church, we have screens. So the camera, cameras be panning and stuff. <laughs> I was like, oh well, it is what it is. Right, right. No, no, what if about I get an email? What about the if secular venues? <laughs> what about in the secular venues? He said that too. You know, yeah, you have your moments where you uh, see something funny happening and you just can't hold it, you know, and you just let it go. And then, and then when you have band members that you joke around with and mm -hmm. they, you won't make eye tech eye contact it's it's over <laughs> you know yeah. yeah so so let's you know so for the young drummers that are out there that are getting in the industry um can you share with them how they get endorsements or what endorsements look like when you are a professional drummer yeah i have this conversation uh several times with younger drummers um these companies they're they're not <coughs> looking to just give you free instruments. Right. They're looking. I mean, they're, I mean, they're a company, so they're everything they do is really is to, to benefit them mm -hmm. and them making money. So, uh, giving away stuff for free is not not their goal. So, a lot of drummers they got to realize you have to create a resume um, and be and, and act be actively working mm -hmm. to earn mm -hmm. an endorsement you know so that's that's a major thing that these young guys don't really understand they just think okay i'm getting stuff for you know for free or a discount i'm endorsed no you gotta work so mm -hmm. people out there in the audience and on tv can see you playing that product right 
you know, that I mean, because they, these drum companies, they see a lot. And unfortunately, it's the, the young church drummers. They see you coming a mile away. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you got situations where a lot of, you know, drummers, they'll get free gear and end up selling it, you know, because mm-hmm. they're not playing nowhere. Mm-hmm. That's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And these companies know because when they sell this gear to, like, say, for instance, they, they sell it to a music store, mm-hmm. everything has a serial number. Mm-hmm. So they can find out all, all that stuff. You know, they can they can track it, wow. track it back to you. Mm-hmm. You know, like I gave you this this stuff in in good faith mm-hmm. that you're going to use it, mm-hmm. and then you just go in and sell it. You know, I don't know I'm known of drummers who get a bunch of stuff and just to sell it. Well, I'm like if you want to do, you want to be a salesman, get a job at guitar store. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of ghetto. You know, yeah, yeah. it is. It's, it's, it's kind of ghetto. Now. Let's talk about you as a solo artist, because some people may not know you got your own project. Yes, yes, I did. Um, I've, that it's always been a dream of mine to, to create my own music mm-hmm. as a drummer. Yes, because mm-hmm. um, I'm I'm into music rather than just drums. So my project is not full of a bunch of drum solos and everything. I I like playing good music, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, I've finally you know, stepped out and made it happen. And, you know, it's been, it's been cool. I'm actually working. I got a single ready to release. Uh, and I probably, this October is coming up. I'll probably do it mid October. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a smooth jazz single that I'm going to release. And then I also did a Christmas single last year um, that I didn't finish until pretty late. So I didn't really promote it a lot. Mm-hmm. But I am going to put it, you know, promote it and put, get it on on, on radio uh, this season. Yeah, so. And my my wife is actually singing. I'm, well, I'm I'm actually doing a little bit of singing myself. Come on, singer. And Come on, wife. it's in you. It's in you. Yeah. Come on, brother. And my wife, my my wife sang as well on it. So it's, it turned out pretty well. No right. So you all will be the one of the first to, to hear it and get it. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And, and people don't realize church musicians are some of the best singers. They can show yeah. you how to do the runs and riffs because they've do it with their fingers, so it's easy right. to relate to the vocals. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. I appreciate you you e- saying except that as, some. as a church musician. Except some. Uh, oh no, I'm not. I'm not directed towards you. I'm just uh, saying in oh, general. Oh, oh, okay. So it's like that. <laughs> I need you to ask him the famous question now. Oh, if I gave you two million dollars, and I said, "Hey, Jay, I'm gonna. I want you to do a Jay presents. They can be dead or alive." Who would your artist be on your show? Ooh. Wow. First, I would have to say Sting. Ooh, that's okay. legendary. Um, that's my that's my prayer to play with Sting. <sighs> to work with Sting. I would love to work with Sting. I, I always say I don't think it's happened yet because if it happens, I know rap is gonna happen right after it. Right. And God ain't ready for me to <laughs> Right, right. Rap so he ain't ready for me to play with Sting. Right. But, um, Cause you know I get on the telephone like Sting. Check this one out, right. homie. <laughs> right. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Um, I I I'll put I give him a good deal. I'm like, look, he he'll come for uh a two piece and in 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 some honey. <laughs> Well, I, I I need some money too. <laughs> Come on, right? Come on, brother. That's the businessman. Come on through. Right. Yeah. My, my wife ain't gonna go for the two pieces. Well, 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 right. Well, 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 watch this. I want to play with you, but you gotta give me more than a two piece. Right. <laughs> right. right. And and right. Sting got money. Yeah. 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 Um, other artists, uh, living. I would say Phil Collins. I'm a mm-hmm. big Phil oh, Collins legend. fan. Legend. Legend. Um. Stevie, definitely Stevie. Herbie Hancock. Wow. Yeah, Herbie, uh, definitely. Um, who else? Uh, some of the artists that are not with us anymore. I've I've worked with some of them. Um, George Duke is one. Mm-hmm. Wow. George Duke. Uh, Joe Sample. Mm-hmm. I would love to have worked with. Prince at least one. Mm-hmm. Wow. Maybe maybe not be in his band mm-hmm. and as his drummer because I've heard he he can be a little you know mean. You know, 
but not I wouldn't say mean, but you know, particular. I don't I don't want to get a call four o'clock in the morning after just getting home from rehearsal all day. Hey, I got an idea. I need y'all to come back. Wow. That ain't happening for me. Right. <laughs> not even for a two piece. <laughs> right, right. 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 Yeah. So, you know, um artists like that, you know, I I would love to work with. That was a list, yeah. man. That was a big list. Yes. Well, brother, we we you know we can talk to you all day because yes. you, you 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 are our, our brother. Yeah, and, he's, and he's, we he's, love he's, you. He's so so down to earth, man. Yeah. You're easy to talk to. Yeah. So we we Thank you. I appreciate that. we're gonna go offline and get this deal on the table so we can get you in San Diego and get some roll tacos and you know and all the other good <laughs> stuff that we have down here. Yeah. Uh, can, where can people find you? And then will you introduce your new single? Uh, my Facebook is. Uh, J. Williams music. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram is the same. J. Williams music. Mm -hmm. um, that's those are pretty much my my social media thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you could probably see me working with different artists around you know around the country. Uh, Draw Albright, Chaka, Chaka. Um, start starting in November. I'm doing the Dave Koz Christmas tour. Wow, and that tour that's featuring uh, Jonathan Buller. That comes here uh, sometimes. So that's, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah this year, um, mm -hmm. we we have, we normally do Sandy. I think what is that theater downtown? Civic, the Balboa. I think it's Civic. Balboa. Oh, yeah, it's Balboa. Balboa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We normally do Balboa. Um, his other guest, uh, Richard Elliott, saxophone, who actually lives in San Diego. Yeah. Um, Rick Bronze, trumpeter. And a vocalist who lives in San Diego, Rebecca J. Yeah, yeah, we know her. Yeah, yeah, she's she's on the Christmas tour with us as well. So wow. that'll be fun. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Well, well, well. Introduce us. Well, first of all, when you get before you get to San Diego, let us know in advance so so that okay. we we can prepare and make everybody else is just like how you what how did you get that and they were like, what about us and i'll be like saying oh this is this is this for mr williams right <laughs> but uh i would definitely i would definitely call you all so you, you all come to the show yes yeah, sir so yes sir yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely all right introduce the new tr uh, track so we can rock it right here on god radio uh, which, which track is it? Just Because. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Just Because. Um, <laughs> it's a, a, <laughs> a tune that I really, really love, written by a pastor from this area. Actually, he's, he's an amazing musician as well. It, it, was, it was a vocal tune, and I just arranged, you know, an instrumental. Um, and I have uh, some great musicians on it, um, some California based musicians, a um, guy by the name of Melvin Lee Davis lives in Orange County. He's on bass. He's actually Chaka's musical director as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. And he mixed the record. Um, he's, wow. he's on that. A guy named Tracy Carter is in the LA area. Oh, yes. Yeah, we, we know, know Tracy. Tra I know Tracy. Yeah. Yes. We know Tracy. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, so it's a blessing to have those guys on, on the record. Um, and I, I love the tune. And I, I mean, it's just, it's easy listening, but it's, it's musical as well. It's kind of, I, it's kind of a yellow jackets type vibe on on that song, so that's 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 one of my favorite songs on that record. Well, here you have it from our brother Jay Williams. This is just because right here on GLD Radio One dot com. <laughs> 